is Dave and welcome to the Weird Kids Show. It's awesome having you here today. So, this is my second chance, second try, if you will. Uh, this tutorial here, I tried to do last week and I had shot it all and went to sit down and edit it to find out the entire file uh, SD card was corrupt. So, um, oh well, it happens, you know. Anyways, uh, this is what we got out of that deal. I think some of you have seen it. I shared it on Facebook and uh, uh, Twitter, Instagram. I think even on TikTok. I started doing a few things here and there on TikTok. Uh, but this is what I'm calling taxidermy teddies, okay? And basically what it's doing is we're creating a skeletal structure so that you have a figure, a teddy bear figure. Uh, it can be any plush. Uh, it doesn't have to be a teddy bear. It could be, a, you know, anything. That's a, As long as it's a stuffed animal, you can probably pull it off. Uh, but they're creepy. Um, so, I'm going to do that with this guy. I've already done this guy as a scary bear. Uh, I'm not going to get into the mouth, the teeth, and all that, because uh, Alan had done... Uh, Alan Hobbs over there at Still Speed Studio had done something here recently, so it's not necessary. Unless you really want me to, I can get into doing that, because I plan on doing a bunch of these, different shapes and sizes and stuff like that. But the one we're going to do today, not only am I going to turn it into a taxidermy teddy, but I'm also going to turn this little guy into a Halloween carnival game that you guys can play at home uh, with your kids or it could be used as an adult game as well it could be something a little supplement to your haunt uh, so we're going to get into that so I uh, appreciate you guys here for being here so let's get into this thing <laughs> Alright guys, we want to take this guy and turn it into a freestanding figure that you can decorate and make a permanent figure, statue. Alright, so the very first thing that I'm going to need is a piece of wood. Now I know that wood prices are crazy right now. Uh, I'm not buying new wood so I'm starting to get into some of the, my scrap material here. And basically all I did was just uh, traced out a shape for a base. We're going to need a base, okay? Um, you can make it circular, you can make it whatever. Do whatever you want. Cut out any kind of jagged, uh, do whatever you want there. Just as long as it's big enough in mass to where uh, it's going to be able to support uh, the weight of this figure and you're not also going to have to worry about it tilting, okay? So I've already traced out a pattern here and uh, with my jigsaw I'm going to go ahead and cut this out so I'm going to do that now and I'm going to show you what we need to do next alright guys so uh, you know briefly um, going back to as far as uh, Stuart Gordon had made a film called Dolls um, that I really liked the concept of uh, later on uh, Full Moon uh, did like the Puppet Master series Demonic Toys and then, of course, we had Chucky and uh, now Annabelle. Which she's not animated, but uh, she's still creepy as hell. And then we had this one here last year, late last year, starring Nicolas Cage called, I think it was uh, Willy's Wonderland. And I really loved that. I ended up watching it like three times. I thought that was a really cool concept. And, of course, they got that video game, uh, which I think that movie was loosely based on, called Five Nights at Freddy, about these mechanical... Uh, creatures, you know, the mechanical uh, animals coming to life. Well, he's not like a uh, mechanical animal. He is what he is, and that's a teddy bear stuffed animal. And so I thought, man, you know, it would be a cool concept if, with all the stuffed animals in the world, I think that I, I, I read a study that said that Americans spend over uh, one billion every year on stuffed toys, um, which is like uh, astronomical amount of stuffed animals, okay? And one day they come alive 
but yet they don't want to cuddle. Okay, and so we would totally be screwed. We'd be forget those zombie apocalypse because we would totally be outnumbered by these guys. But this is just one guy I had done. I don't have a name for him. Maybe you guys can give me a name. But I had fun with them. You know, uh, I didn't do all of this last week. I basically was just showing you how I did the skeleton, you know, uh, the taxidermy for this guy. Um, when I found out that the footage was lost, I just decided to do something else. And then uh, I worked on him over the weekend. Uh, so he's done. Um, but we're going to use this guy. So what I had done was, you saw that I cut out the base for him. Um, what I did with this guy is, first of all, what you're going to need to do is, what I did was I cut down, I cut a hole here on both ends of the paws, and I removed a bunch of the stuffing, and I cut them from here down, and removed a bunch of the stuffing, and then I cut a hole on the bottom of his feet, and then removed the stuffing. Now, here's something I discovered about this guy that's different about that guy, and you might encounter it too. This guy here was sewn in one piece, okay? His legs, there's no seam here. They cut this out of one pattern, it seems. I don't think they even sewed on the sleeves. I think it was all cut out of one pattern. This guy here, uh, just the top half was from one pattern. They did the legs separately. So, they cut this out separately and sewed it on separately. Alright, so... The reason I'm bringing that up is because to make a skeleton, and I, the reason why I put that hole in there, is that I need to be able to run a piece of PVC up into the body for the legs and the stand. All right, but you can't do that if you get there and there's that seam there that it's sewn to the thing. So what I had to do, and I've already got a fix for it, is uh, inside... I went ahead and I cut all right by doing that I opened up this and I opened up uh, the cavity into the torso but what it also did was it made it there's a hole here now so if we put our PVC in there and just stand it up as it is you're gonna see that PVC I've already got a remedy for that and I'll show you here when we get to that point so yes we are going to build this guy a skeleton out of three quarter inch PVC pipe okay and what I am going to use is I'm going to use some three quarter inch T's which are slip fittings okay and then we've got some 90's you can choose to use some 45's if you want to change the angles um, you can get a cross piece which I kind of wish I had for other projects uh, but I don't. I only have these T's. A cross piece, you're going to have an additional piece that comes up here because we're going to use one of these for the collarbone that runs to the shoulders, but then we can also have a piece to come up for the head. Okay? Um, but fortunately, the way these things are set up, this guy doesn't have a piece in his head, and I'm able to move and manipulate his head. So you could actually pose his head and tack it if you want, or use a pin if you want to look, you know, change the look on his face and everything, uh, you can manipulate it and then pin it after. Um, but yeah, he doesn't have anything inside of his head. He's just got a skeleton from the shoulder down. So that's an option. You can get a, a cross piece if you so choose. We're going to use uh, a T. We've got two T's here. One for the pelvis and then one for the uh, collarbone, shoulders. All right. So I've got him cut open, ready to go. Uh, I've taken the, most of the stuffing out. You don't have to take all of it out, but I, uh, I took most of it out on this one. Okay, and now he's ready to go. I can put him aside. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to need to do is, when well, you're going to work him with three quarter inch, I need a drill with a, a one inch paddle bit. Okay, and you say, okay, well, wait a minute, you're using three-quarter inch pipe, but you're using a one-inch uh, paddle bit. The three-quarter 
is the inner dimension, also known as ID, inner dimensions. The outer dimensions is, is one inch, okay? Uh, so actually it's a hair over one inch, which is good because it's gonna make a nice tight snug fit, okay? So I'm not just gonna wanna go and dr start drilling, all right? First I'm gonna wanna take my, my uh, character here and I'm gonna kinda stand him up there and take a look at him. See where his feet lay flat on the base. Look at the positioning. Um, and then, okay, so I'm good with that. So I'm going to put my finger there. Because I'm going to go ahead and then just drill one hole here. Alright, I'm going to do that with you guys. Yeah, I'm drilling holes inside my house. So I got the mess to clean up there after. Alright, so I got my first hole. I'm able to take my PVC and run it in to that hole, find the hole inside, and then run that piece of pipe up inside the cavity, the torso. I'm going to stick that piece of pipe on there, and it's super tight. It's too tight. You're probably going to want a hammer. I'm going to want to bore it out a little bit to bore it out because I don't have anything bigger than this. To bore something out, you stick it in there and then you kind of move it around while you're drilling it. Don't don't go fast. Uh, try to keep control of it and be safe, you know. Alright, so I flanged it out a bit by doing that. If, if anything, I'm creating a, uh, a beveled edge, just enough for that pipe to get in there because I can hammer it in the rest of the way. So I've got a hammer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick that pipe in there. I'll tap it down. I don't want to go too deep. I don't want to seat it. I just want it in there uh, a bit because I still got to measure out the other side. You'll find that once you do one or two of these, then you'll see it actually goes pretty quick. So I got that piece of pipe, the hole for that one. All right, so that piece of pipe's going to go there. Now I'm going to put my other thing here, put his leg foot down, and I'm going to put my finger, I'm going to drill a hole right there. I already ringed it out. I got my extra stick of PVC, three quarter inch. I went ahead and bought, uh, I think I bought two sections. I ended up buying a bucket of the fittings, uh, like this. Here, it's more cost effective, I think. And then you're also going to need um, uh, all purpose uh, PVC cement. Now, you might find that you might have to buy uh, a set that comes with the primer. Okay, you don't need the primer. The primer is only if you're going to use this what it's you know, intended for. Most people use this for water lines, irrigation, and stuff like that. Anyways, we got our PVC cement, our uh, three-quarter inch fittings for this one here again. I'm going to use two three-quarter inch slip-by-slip tees and four three-quarter inch slip-by-slip -slip 90s. Like I said, if you want to look for 45s, get those if you so choose. All right, so that's our material list for that. Um, you can cut this stuff with a hacksaw. Uh, you got to be careful and go slow because with any kind of flexible blade like a like a, a hacksaw, it can walk on you. You can end up having this like crazy hacked edge. Um, I use PVC cutters, and I ended up having to grab my ancient pair, which are starting to get gummed up now. Uh, I actually have a brand new pair somewhere, but these things are great when it comes to cutting PVC. Uh, a good set, when it's brand new and sharp, uh, can go through this stuff like butter. And uh, anyway, that's more than enough. All right, so yeah, you put that on there, and then uh, once you get it going, it's it's a clean cut. All right, and that's pretty darn straight too. So, 
Um, I'll go ahead and cut another couple smaller pieces here. All right, now we're going to want our, I'm gonna, it's a two-part thing here. I'm impatient. I want to get this thing done. I don't want to wait on it. Uh, so I'm going to use a two-part epoxy. I'm, I, for this one, I'm going to use Loctite epoxy to put inside the holes. All right. And then um, I'm going to hot use hot glue too. All right. So the hot glue is going to the uh, epoxy long term is going to cure and, and really secure it. But the hot glue is going to enable me to continue working without worrying about it flopping around and messing this up. So uh, I'm going to get a bit of this first. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this thing, these pieces of pipe glued in there. Uh, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, basically, well, all I did was um, I put some epoxy in those holes, and then I, uh, I pounded them in here. I didn't put any hot glue yet. I want to finagle with this first. All right, so the pipe's inside, and now we've got pipe inside them. We're starting to build our skeleton. All right, so now we need a pelvis. All right, don't glue anything here. I'm, I, you know, I thought better not to put hot glue down here because we're going to need to hide those uh, cut marks here uh, from the legs so we're going to have to actually glue this after but we'll, we'll deal with that at the end but right now I need a pelvis so you need to stand them up again it wouldn't hurt to tuck that in there all right so put his feet flat on the ground and then we're going to establish where his how else is going to be? Alright, so I figure it'll be about right here. Alright, so about here. Oops. So about here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut just below this right here. You can go, me, I eyeball things. You can get all, you know, official. You want to measure and cut everything uniform. Me, I've always been an eyeball guy. And I find, too, that uh, when you go with eyeball, like, you get some pretty interesting postures and stuff you wouldn't otherwise get. Uh, you go all uniform, then... You can end up looking like you have just had a, a rigid, uniform shape. All right, so I cut those just above what would be, I guess, the belly. And this is where I need to take the T here, which this is going to go. This this part here is going to point up because now that's going to be that's going to serve as our spinal column. All right, so now I need some really short pieces because we're going to put a 90 here I'm going to try to squeeze that in there alright so I already see what I'm going to have to do see this is a good good lesson here and I'm got this this is in real time here guys so I'm realizing that uh, there's not enough space alright so I'm going to have to re-drill a hole and move it over a bit. Okay, so I'm glad that's why it's good to find, find these things out, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the hole over one of these holes over a bit. Alright. I didn't have that problem there. It, it seemed to like go in really good. No problems. Alright, so I'm going to stick some hot glue on this one. Just so we can keep Alright, there we have our legs. Alright, so now I need my 290s. I'm just going to loosely fit them on there. Alright, I'm going to make sure I got room for that T. And that's going to be tight. Super tight. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to cut super small 
insert to go in between there and I'm going to have to finagle it to make it come together. Yeah, this is where you're going to run into, uh, you know, you got to dry fit all this stuff before you do any kind of gluing. Make sure everything goes into place. You don't absolutely necessarily have to glue this if you don't want to. The reason being is because uh, as long as you're careful with it, you're going to be able to use it for some articulation. So here, I'm going to go in here. All right, so now the hip is in there. All right, now I need to put in another piece. Oh, that's perfect. So, like I said, if you don't want to glue this, it's going to enable you to move a bit back and forth if you want. Uh, but you got to be careful that uh, you know you don't pull on it too hard and separate it, especially after you've had everything all closed up and everything. So, all right. So now we need our shoulders. So now I need another key here. I want to tuck it in there first. Make sure. That's going to work out. Alright, so we got it about there. Okay. I need to figure out how much pipe I'm going to need before this before this shoulder starts. Alright, so got my fitting there. So I'm going to start with uh, two and a half inches, let's say. You know, I can always cut another one if it's not long enough or whatever, but, you know, I, it, it serves no purpose for me to give you guys the recipe as, oh, well, I cut this two inches or three inches because no stuffed animal is created, is, you know, is, is alike. You know, you're going to find different scenarios where you might have to go wider, you might have to go more narrow. All right, so I cut a couple of pieces. They're about two and a half inches long. I'm going to stick them in the in the 90s like that I'm gonna go in here I can actually do it from here uh, stick that in through where the shoulder would be come back inside and shove that in there you can glue this and you get in your final position if you want you are like I said you can just keep going and keep it uh, loose so that you can pose it if you want all right, so that's in there. And my shoulder, so far, that's about where it would need to be, too. That's probably going to work out. All right, so I'm going to go over here, shove this piece in. Pull this over. And that's in a good spot, too. All right, so... So already, he's already, you could, if you want to leave the arms like that, you can. You're not obligated to articulate the arms. All right, I, I want to I wanna do something here, because uh, I want him to be holding something. All right, and that's going to be part of that game we, we talked about. So uh, the head, you can, you, can, uh, you can glue it from inside. Me, like once we get the stuffing in, uh, he's uh, he's gonna look, uh, you're gonna be able to get him in the position you want. He's gonna look good, he's gonna be okay. All right, so now, now that that's in there, I need another piece. You can go, I was gonna go with elbows, but I'm not gonna do that. And the reason being is because his arms are so short that it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be ideal all right so he's just gonna be have his arms down on this side all right so I need another piece of three quarters of PVC pipe but it's pretty easy guys uh, once you get your materials cut you're on your way all right so I'm gonna go get this in there and get set up for the 
what we're gonna do next guys so hang tight appreciate you being here all right guys so I have <clears throat> he his skeleton is done all right so what I did was I allowed uh, I cut the pipe uh, just about like a I don't know half an inch quarter inch past where the hand because we're gonna go ahead and glue hot glue this seam here where we cut it you won't see it the way we do it with the hot glue uh, you won't see it. All right, he's still floppy. He has no stuffing in him. All right, before I get all crazy, I am going to paint this base black. And while I'm at it, I got this tray at the dollar store. And I am going to put this on the. This guy's going to be holding this. All right, so I figured out. Uh, Initially, I was going to use this guy for that, and that's why, as you can see, he's got the nine. His arms were longer. All right, and I was able to put that nine in there to give him an elbow. That's what the extra nineties were for. And then he was going to be holding the tray. He was going to be the one that was going to be this game. But uh, when I found out I lost the footage, I just went with this, and then uh, decided to do it this one. But then I realized quickly here that his arms are too long or too short. So I can't have him, you know, there's not enough arm where it's going to be sitting there. So now I've got to change my tactic on how I'm going to do it. And so I think what I'm going to do is he's going to be holding it on the edges. And then he's going to have some straps that go around and attach here on both sides. And he's going to be holding a tray like those cigarette girls back in the old days. They used to walk around with that, that tray and the strap selling the cigarettes and stuff like that. But, so I need this. This is going to be part of that carnival game I told you about. So I need to paint this black and the base black. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to come back. We're going to get ready to start stuffing this guy and get him all closed up and buttoned up. And then we're going to be able to get into the game portion of this build. So hang tight guys. Alright guys, so I went ahead and I painted the base and then I painted, uh, spray painted the top of this tray. I didn't do that backside yet. I'm gonna, I can do that after. Um, but now I got the fit back on the pipe. So what I think I'm gonna do, I want to glue the pelvis in place. I don't want movement there. I want it to be sturdy. You might want to do that. Uh, if you're doing this game because it's going to require throwing some balls and stuff like that so I'm just going to just take some of this PVC glue you don't need much at all all right I'll get that on there Now I have it the way I want it. All right. So now, all that stuffing I took out of there, I'm going to need to start packing it in there and filling them out. And you want to pack a lot up around the head because that's also going to help you to uh, make his head more secure so that it's not flopping around so much. Um, I didn't want that. Put a little dab of glue in there. I didn't get this fitting. So he's not going to move after this. In there. Alright, so now I'm going to get him in position. He's going to stay in place. Okay, so he's not going to move now. And it don't take long for that glue to set up at all. In fact, you only have a couple of seconds to move it and manipulate it because it's gonna it's gonna adhere super quick and you're gonna you're gonna not be able to take it apart I promise you you're gonna be breaking the elbow or part around it before you'll break that weld glue all right so like I said I'm just packing uh, packing it in there around the head inside all right I can stuff some down in the legs yeah, you just want to keep filling it until you're happy with it. All right, so 
Uh, I'm gonna do that and then uh, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do to close it all up. So hang tight. All right guys, so I got him stuffed uh, the way I wanted him to. I've got, I've got a bunch up there in that neck and stuff. So now uh, his head stays up and uh, check it out, he's got a, he's a pudgy guy. Got a big old butt. Uh, but I didn't want to put too much here in the middle. And the reason being is, now you got two options here. This is your biggest seam. Um, if you sew it up, you can sew it up with thread and needle. That's fine. I don't have any thread. I looked, tore the place apart, can't find it. I've got the needles, don't have the thread. But, it's not the end of the world because you can still hot glue this. It will stay in place. It's a strong bond and it's in, you won't be able to see it too the way we, we do this uh, the front of that guy was glued okay so but what I'm going to do here first of all these openings in the hands real simple you just peel it back a bit you want to get some in the inside a bit you don't want to put on the outside you want to put some on the inside around the hole okay and then you just pinch it together All right, and now you don't even see it. It's hidden inside. Get that arm up a bit. Get some in there. Pinch it. We don't even see it. The hair, you can pull the hair over it. It's gone, you don't see it. Uh, we don't need to do the bottom of the feet, obviously, but we are gonna need to do these. And I'm going to wait until this is glued. Now here, because I'm gluing it, I'm going to start in the middle. So that I can start getting a good line up. So I'm going to put some glue here. And I'm going to pull it together. Alright, and I'm going to hold it and pinch it. You're going to want to hold it for a little bit. And that's why you don't want it too tight here. Because uh, you don't want as much pressure. It's, it'll be ideal... If, if you have some play, then it'll come together a lot smoother and there'll be less chance of it falling apart. But once you get a good bond, it is a good bond. All right, see, I'm letting it go. Uh, still not quite set up. I want to hold it for a little bit more. Give it time to set up and cool down a little bit. And then we can move on to... Uh, to the game itself which uh, what I did while uh, while I was waiting for this I drilled some holes and I put some straps on there I don't want to show you how he's going to be holding it here all right so we got him started I'm gonna come down a little bit more put some more glue and then do the same thing pull it together pinch it all right, so I'm going to work on this a bit, and then I'm going to come back, and we're going to move on to the next step. So hang tight, guys. All right, guys, so that's it. All right, all right, he's done. All right, so like I said, you can use hot glue. Be careful. I burned myself a couple of times. Um, but what you're going to do, like I said, you start in the middle, pinch it together, let it cure, and cool down, and then uh, work my way up, work my way down, whatever. Now, I find if you find you've got some separations or you can see then it's easy. Down here at the very bottom, you can take your scissors and cut some fur down at the bottom and then just stick it into the glue while it's still hot and fill in to hide the seams. You know, and you can manipulate the hair. Um, but he's good. Uh, we glued that. I glued these holes where we had to cut for the legs so we could get the pipes through. So now he is done as far as being a uh, taxidermy teddy. All right, now the mouth with him, I had articulated him first, uh, put a skeleton together first, and then worked on the mouth and the eyes. It, you're going to find it's easier to build your armature first, get it where he's in a standing position, 
and then work on the mouth and all the other details if you want to add clothes or whatever you want to do with them uh, you can but this is a bonus video here because you're getting a two for one I showed you how to taxidermy a teddy now I'm going to show you a game that I actually came up with and used last Halloween with the kids uh, that they they had a blast okay and it's quite simple all right remember this tray I showed you I bought for a dollar to dollar store well I drill the holes and I put the string in there okay uh, so I'm gonna put that over his head all right so now it's around his neck and then down here because there's PVC pipe up in here it's already staying, but you could glue it if you want. If you find a teddy bear with longer arms, you can put those elbows in there and have the tray resting on its arms. Um, you could get a wooden tray, uh, drill into it. There's any way you want to attach this tray is up to you, okay? All you want to do is get this tray in its hands. Now, you can do this on the teddy bear, or you could do it on a bunny rabbit plush. You could do it on a huge one if you want. Uh, the, that option's up to you, all right? But the point of this game, and it's fun, you can do it with kids or adults, is what I did was I got a bunch of cups. I got these cups at the dollar store. So we got some pinks, and we got some toxic waste green. And then you just simply put the cups on the tray, okay? Uh, you can what I did was I glued them onto the piece of wood in fact the basis for this guy and that guy over there was the plank of wood I used where I actually made this game for the kids and I glued the cups onto the wood all right so you want to get them cups on there you can paint them if you want to uh, or whatever you want to do mix up the colors uh, for that you know mess with it a bit so we, if you glue it down, it'll be all be secure. All right, so now you got the cups in there. <clears throat> like I said, you can have a, a bigger figure with a bigger tray, whatever you want to do. But this is this is the idea, the object of the game. So you've got the cups, okay? You establish a point to where you put it, and then a line to where the the player's starting point is, okay? Uh, I don't know if you guys remember seeing these at the dollar store. These are like ping pong eyeballs. And they come in all kinds of different colors. Reds, blues, uh, yellows. They might have had greens. I can't remember seeing them. But uh, cheap. I mean, it's at the dollar store. Uh, you can get these. So what I did was... I used, We used these eyeballs... And I did a system where I had these cups, although I had a bunch more, okay? You take a bunch of uh, sandwich baggies, uh, and you make awesome candy bags, like bonus candy bags. Fill them up with all kinds of different candies or whatever. Um, put some little toys in there. Get some Dollar Star toys and put them in there. I also had gotten some bigger prizes, like 10 15 There was even some $20 grand, like big prizes. So there was probably like four or five big prizes you could potentially win. And then the rest were smaller ones, like the dollar store coffin uh, that had some candies in it or um, some little wind-ups, whatever. You can have all kinds of different, uh, different uh, prizes. And so then I took a sheet of paper... And I made up and decided what all the prizes were going to be. I made up all the bags. And then I assigned each one a number. So I took a piece of paper and I wrote one on the piece of paper and cut it out. And I put it with that prize. Then I wrote an extra one, folded that up and put it in a jar. So each prize you had to, you had to, you have to cut out two numbers. And so you assign each prize a number. Okay, I think I had something like 25 prizes. So I had to write 25 uh, numbers twice. One to put with the prize and one to put in a bowl. Okay? And then 
mixed all up, all mixed the numbers all up so he didn't know what was going into what and then just took pieces of paper and randomly threw them in the cups okay and so we've established a throw line the kids were given uh, to start with two of these ping pong eyeballs and starting from the line and one of the things that I did that made it extra fun was I made it dark and I had um, some stro like strobe lights and you know, Halloween lights and stuff like that. So uh, it you know it it had an extra Halloween feel to it. And simple enough, the kids from the throw line would have to get a ball in one of the cups. Okay, and once they did that, we would go inside this cup and take the number out and match it up with the corresponding prize. And what became fun is that the kids looked and saw the numbers that the good prizes had, and so they were rooting themselves on, come on, number 13, or whatever number it was with the good prizes. And so it became a little competition as to who could get some of the good prizes and stuff. But I'll tell you, they had a blast. And, um, you know, and it, it takes some time, you know. Uh, once you start dwindling down, and you're not filling all the cups with the numbers, then I allow them to have four balls, okay? Now you can do this with your adult parties too, you know, uh, make different little prize packages, you know, uh, candles, scented candles, or little uh, alcohol nip bottles, or a bottle of wine, or whatever, you know, it's something fun that you can do in an adult party too. But it's super simple, and uh, when you do it with a presentation with like this guy here, it just adds to the Halloween fun. So, anyways, I hope you like it. You got a two for one this week. You got a uh, taxidermy teddy tutorial showing how you can make a figure with your teddy bear or plush, whatever. And then you also got the Halloween uh, carnival game that is fun for the kids as well as the adults. Um, anyways, guys, please, if you haven't done so already, like and subscribe and hit the bell. It's going to inform you when I upload uh, further videos. Check out my brothers, Keith from Cobwebs and Candlesticks and Vic Springston from Monster Misfits. Together we are the Trio of Terror. And uh, come on over there, uh, Trio of Terror, and say hi to us. Uh, please check out my uh, page. It's the Weird Kid uh, group there. And uh, talk to me. Come in and say hi. But anyways, guys, and I appreciate you so much. And until next time, peace.